بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Privacy is dead and social media holds the smoking gun. An important principle in usul. So the more we on social media, the more the guns are blazing. That's why he said, privacy on the internet, that's an oxymoron. That's an oxymoron. Privacy is paradise. It's Jannah. It's your hifazat, it's your protection. So it's your life, it's, 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 it's a trust. People don't know half of it and they don't need to know either. They don't need to know at all. They, didn't, they don't have a right. They're not supposed to have access to it at all. It is your private life. So it's very important that this wave of, of propaganda, this incitement to fame and name where through different channels it's been promoted and so in describing Hollywood they say a place where they shoot too many pictures and not enough actors place where they shoot too many pictures and not enough actors in Hollywood brides give the bouquets and throw away the grooms so that's that's the the the, 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 the notion that's the mindset that's the alignment. So we have to be very careful that uh, we don't get caught up in the strap of technology. Any person who uh, has embarked on this year, then they lose a lot of skills. And humanity is losing a lot of skills because technology is replacing those skills as a replacement and there's no replacement for all human value. So a lot of research data has been done over the next many years, what machines will replace humans and uh, the new renaissance of technology. So we shouldn't get caught like a person went hunting once in the jungle and uh, there was an old Indian who came up to him and just said, tomorrow rain, tomorrow rain. So they didn't listen to him and uh, the next day they went hunting and it rained. So a few days later again, he came up and he said, tomorrow storm. And this time they were skeptical. They said, should we, shouldn't be. And he said, no, he's just an ordinary Indian. Like in the US, they have the red Indian. So uh, they didn't take him seriously. And they went hunting the next day and they had to stop everything. So the, the person hunting was very impressed with his weather predictions. So he told his assistant that uh, find the tribe, bring this man and put him on our payroll because it's costing me money and time. So I need more successful hunts. So uh, they searched for him and they got him the next day he forecasted and exactly what he said came true. Then he disappeared for a long time and they could not find him and they sent for him and uh, three weeks later they found him and uh, they said that we will rely on you. It was a very important hunt and that's the whole trip. Was the last part was the climax. We relied on you. So we needed to know what was the weather going to be like. So he just shook his shoulder, shrugged it and said, don't know radio broken, don't know radio broken. So sometimes we get so much caught in our own web that uh, we've been played. Shaitan is playing us, Batil is playing us and we don't know. So privacy. To such an extent, Dean has emphasized privacy that even a voice of a female it plays a vital role in the life of the people of Iman and a female should not speak in a provocative in inducing any um, desires, any appetite and inciting the passion of men. 
So everybody is human and everybody has certain arousals. But Allah in His Hikmah and Wisdom has commanded every group of the Ummah to play their role. Even the wives of the Nabi. So this command is addressed to the wives of the Nabi indicating that if this command was to the azwaj mutahharat then somebody who's of lower stature how much more precaution we should make ya nisa an nabi lastunna ka ahadin min an nisa o wives of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you're not like any other woman fala takhda'na bil qawli do not be soft in speech to such an extent that in whose heart there is a disease then he will be moved with desire فيطمع. he will be moved with desire so without any necessity women should not have any conversation with men especially in a sweet inciting manner so you are not like any other women you are special you have taqwa and part of your taqwa is where Allah enjoined the azwaj mutahharat to be very cautious and uh, Allama Sudi has explained that فَلَا تَخْضَعَنَ بِالْقَوْلِ refers to to not be gentle in speech when addressing men so uh, Ibn Zayd has explained that uh, decent and honorable talk which is known to be good so she should address a non-mahram in a manner which she does not address her husband she speaks to her husband very sweetly and uh, a stranger should be opposite so uh, a principle has been set here to show us privacy that what Allah and His Rasul has classified as privacy we should consider that as well Alama Qurtubi has mentioned in his Jami Al-Ahkam Al-Quran that it is a custom of the Arabs in the time of Jahiliya to speak to men in a, a soft, sweet, inciting, provocative manner and this Quran now prohibited that as well. So Allah is now refuting that, that if you have to converse with a non-mahram male, then um, a narration mentioned in Dar Qutni in his Sunan, where it was said that the azwaj mutahharat would place their hands over their mouths. Why? to prevent any incitement in their voices. So how cautious, how careful were the azwaj mutahharat a great Hanafi scholar Alama Abu Bakr al-Jassas in his Ahkam al-Quran has mentioned that this verse indicates the impermissibility of women raising their voices in the presence of non-mahram males as this may lead to fitna. So, and he, and he explains that this is the reason why the Hanafi scholars have declared and have pronounced women uh, not allowed, are not allowed to give the adhan and it is makru. Why? Because it is not permissible for her to raise her voice. He also explains, and this is, we can check it up in Ahkam uh, al-Quran on Jild 5. So Allah has prohibited women from striking their feet as well. So uh, this prohibition is not allowing men to hear the sound of their footwear. So imagine raising of the voice in such a way that it incites is even more prohibited. Allama Murtada Zabidi in his uh, Shara of uh, Ihya of Imam Ghazali at half has mentioned that uh, the scholars have distinguished the, the singing of non-mahram women and it is considered and declared haram. 
So a male cannot listen to a free singing female. Likewise, Qadi Abu Tayyab al-Tabri has mentioned that uh, if a non-mahram female sings, it will not be permissible for any man, non-mahram male, to listen to her, regardless whether she is in hijab or not. So if the scholars have mentioned clearly and have, have, have advised us on the side of caution, of aura, yes, obviously the fiqh masla, we go to the scholars and the Hanafi scholars, the female voice is not an aura, but when there is a fear of fitna, then the male cannot listen to this female. So the Aisha radiallahu anha and the Sahabiyat taught a hadith in the zarura. So it was confined according to the necessity with the requisites of necessity, where uh, they were fully clothed, they were behind a hijab, etc. Or they used the mahram males. Likewise, Sahabiyat came to inquire Masail from Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. So this usul needs to be understood as zarura, to taqadaru bi qadri zarura. That uh, restrict necessity based on necessity as well. Alama Ibn Humam, who is one of the great uh, Ahnaf scholars in his Fatul Qadir, has mentioned that a female reciting, singing in a melodious voice is considered to be aura. So, uh, important usuls and principles as well. So, in Salah, the Masla also, and Nabi Islam has said, that if the Imam Sab example had to make an error and you need to bring it to his notice, then you will make a tasbih for men. The men don't pick it up, or women are there and there's no males, then the clapping of women. So to draw the attention of the Imam, a woman, a female in Salah should not even give the tasbih. That's how much aura it is. And amongst the great a uh, kutub of, of, of fiqh which the muftis use, Radul Muhtar Ibn Abidin has mentioned that at the time of need, non mahram men may discourse with women on condition that the women do not stretch, they do not soften, they do not. Uh, melodiously speak. So uh, it's important even in other fiqh kitabs details have been mentioned and that's why we need to go to ulama. This is uh, out of a course of discussion in this this this, this course but uh, it is very important that uh, this privacy which Sharia has highlighted is for our protection. Moving on to mobile phones, there's a thing called VPN configuration, which is virtual private networks. So this gives a person security, it gives them privacy where you can route your traffic through a secure channel. So these servers, this encryption between the device and the server, where anybody who wants to monitor you, cannot monitor you. And uh, a person is afforded the luxury of privacy. So you know, the, the, the VPN servers actually doctor a lot of details. So a person should make sure that all the devices should have a VPN. So this VPN, one is privacy and one is anonymity. So for privacy, if you really want, it's two different things. You must remember that it is not a anonymity solution. We've, we've gone through those solutions. We're saying this is a privacy solution. So ideally, you don't want to download these free VPNs. If you had to go, go buy a paid one also. And uh, the problem is these free providers monetize 
something, you know, there's going to be a compromise for them to, to, to sustain the operations. Whereas if you pay for one, then it'll be already monetized through the payment gateway. So it'll increase your privacy. So with uh, emails, we'll get to that Proton Mail, which is a secure email service, but you can also apply for a Proton VPN. So when searching for VPN, it is very important. So this topic that we're discussing, somebody might say it's a lot of jargon, I don't understand. And why is this topic being discussed? But somebody who's in the tech industry, somebody who's fairly avid in, 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 in going uh, particular about privacy, then this is very important, these points. Like uh, uh, having a rare diamond and go and show a coal miner and tell him to evaluate it, he won't be able to give you any value. Why? Because he doesn't know the value. But go to a diamond expert and see what value he puts. So when, when the time is right and we need it, we will realize how important these things are. And immediately now, we need to start taking steps to implement it. A lot of the points mentioned may seem very far-fetched, far -fetched, and a lot of things cannot be mentioned. But in detail, the, the solutions are being provided. So the intelligent would take lesson. So a, a, a secure core is very important for a VPN because the architecture is very unique and it defends a person from any network-based attacks. So, so it'll protect a person uh, by routing out a traffic where it has multiple servers and uh, anybody who wants to monitor the network traffic uh, would find it very difficult and they will not be able to uh, match the browsing activity to that IP. So they normally have servers in, in like, uh, uh, we're talking of Proton Mail, uh, Switzerland, Iceland, where privacy laws are strong and uh, the networks are dedicated. Likewise, you need a VPN which has strong encryption. So you need something with the highest encryption, uh, which is very important. So you get the um, 256, you get different types of encryption, but make sure it's a strong encryption. Then forward secrecy. So this is also very important because somebody can uh, capture your traffic which is encrypted then find software to decrypt it later. So if your encryption is compromised so you need something which gives you forward secrecy then strong protocols as well which are secure so uh, that's important. Then full disk encryption where the servers are protected. So if there is a middleman attack, which generally agencies, etc., do do breach, then uh, this secures your service certificates and all other configuration. So if there is a compromise still to the hackers were not able to access any data. Likewise, a very important principle is a no log policy. So here also your, your browsing history, all the information that you're using, although normally they do not save any logs, but for some reason, even if it's stored somewhere, the third party cannot uh, access those logs. Then DNS leak prevention also where your, your, your routing through your DNS queries, which is through an encrypted tunnel, you don't rely on third party DNS providers. So you, you, you're not vulnerable basically to leaks from DNS queries then another important point is a skill switch. So what happens is your VPN goes on and off. So for some reason it goes off and now it needs to reconnect. The skill switch, it blocks all network traffic and it automatically reestablishes a connection. So uh, inadvertently it will not compromise your privacy. Then if you're using uh, a browser like Tor, it comes with VPN support. So if you got a VPN and you're using Tor as well, 
then uh, this is protection upon protection as well so although it's paid a person can 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 buy it it's important so for every person the basic one is fine you get the advanced one which is a closed source obviously the open source is more because uh, it is audited and that audited uh, details are very important unlike the private one where we don't know if they have our interest in mind if there's some agencies that are behind it and uh, rather go with open source so uh, and this will be across all devices although we discuss in the mobile phone uh, phone but uh, on all platforms we need to uh, adopt a vpn the amal for today is that a person should be in wudu all the time if your wudu breaks uh, try to uh, stay uh, make a new wudu and uh, even for every salah if you can make a fresh wudu then make a fresh wudu lawla an ashukka ala ummati why not why not fear of causing difficulty on my ummah la amartuhum in the kull salatin bi wudu i would have commanded them to make a fresh wudu for every salah wa ma kull wudu in bi siwak and every wudu should be accompanied and used a miswak as well may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq wa make in amal wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin